all social networks have already implemented stories, including VS Code. And the next big thing is to introduce voice rooms, so you can just talk with your followers. And given that I'm the chief social officer for VS Code, you know I had to add it to VS Code. 25 days ago, I started working on this project, and originally it was 100% a VS Code extension, at least for like the first five minutes. One of the first things that I checked was if VS Code could even like access my mic and play audio. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Bill, can you hear me? Unfortunately, it does not work. And I did ask somebody that works at VS Code just to verify I wasn't doing anything weird. And VS Code just doesn't have the permissions to be able to do this. But what you can do is spin up another process. And that process can basically handle all your audio needs. As far as I could tell, this seems to be the way that the audio extension works for VS Code Live Share. I look through the code and it looks to me like they're spinning up a new electron process and injecting Skype into it. So this was not really something I was interested in doing because I wanted to do everything inside some kind of web view. So I came up with this architecture where the VS Code extension would be the UI and it would open a website in your browser, which would act as the voice transport. So you wouldn't actually do anything on the website, but behind the scenes, it would use WebSockets to send information back and forth between the VS Code extension. And then the browser would use WebRTC to send whatever you say into your mic to the voice servers and receive any audio other people say. I knew this was kind of jank at the time, but it seemed like the best way forward. So I kind of just coded the entire thing. It would add a new icon to your nav bar that you can click on, and this would launch a sidebar where you would do everything. And this is a web view. And after you log in with GitHub, this is what you would see. So you can actually create a room, my first room, and this is where you would talk to people. And if you've never done this before, it would open up the voice transport, which just means it takes you to a URL in your browser. And this is that you can kind of control what mic you're using and volume, and you have to allow permissions and whatnot the first time. And this has connected you to the voice server. So the voice server can hear me right now. And if I come back here, you can see I have the active speaker thing. And now I'm talking again and whatnot. So if there are other people that join this room, we'd be able to have a discussion and do all that fun stuff. But it was kind of annoying to test because the way I did authentication is when you're logged in on one VS Code window, it would log you in with the same credentials on all the windows. So I couldn't just like spin up a new window. I did install VS Code Insiders and that did let me test on two accounts, but I still just wasn't happy with the setup. And so my solution was to take the web view, copy paste it, and put it in a browser. I figured this wasn't a total waste of time to set up because I could use it for more than just development. I could actually publish this and this is what people could use if they didn't want to use the VS Code extension. I coded the UI using React, so I kind of just stuck the code inside of Create React App and monkey patched the VS Code functions I was using and it did just kind of work. There was a few things I did have to work out, but once all the wrinkles were gone, I used that for testing and got everything working locally how I liked it, and then I deployed it to OVH and did a little bit of a load test using 100 Puppeteer like tabs all on my computer just to make sure it didn't crumple. I probably should have used a VPS instead of my computer when launching that many Puppeteer sessions. I thought it was going to be fine. I thought those were rookie numbers, but yeah, it did kind of brick my computer, but the voice server was totally fine. It only used around 15% of CPU for that many listeners. I wanted to do a real test next, so I pinged my Discord. And thank you everyone that came out and gave it a try, but it was an utter disaster. And not because of anyone except for myself. The voice server was fine. It didn't die or crash or anything, but when real people used it, my code was just so buggy, exceptions were being thrown left and right, and it was just unusable. The source of the bugs was me being bad, but the coefficient that multiplied against everything and made everything way more complex was having the UI and the voice transport have to communicate through WebSockets. I knew with enough effort I could get it to work, and this did feel like the best path forward for the VS Code extension, but at this point I did start to question whether it was actually worth it. And I did start dreaming about a happier future, where the UI and the voice transport could be one. I thought through the different ways I could go about solving the bugs, and I did some real deep self-reflection. And I asked myself, what would Elon Musk do in this situation? And I figured he would buy some Dogecoin. So I did that. And I also figured he would tell me, F Microsoft. How many VS Code extensions have they acquired from you? Zero. Make it a website. Make it a billion dollar unicorn, not a niche programming extension. So I did exactly that. I ditched the VS Code extension, and this allowed me to simplify my code by over 9,000%. 
and this project was really no longer VS Code Clubhouse. This was the birth of something new. This was the birth of Doge House. Doge House is a new audio social network website that may or may not be a Clubhouse clone with less features, a dark theme, open signups, and cross-platform support. And yes, it works on Android. Now don't look too closely at the UI right now because I'm gonna do some last minute styling tonight and it's gonna look like 5% better when you see it in person. But this is the basic gist of the website. You can create rooms where you can talk to other people in or if they already exist, you can click and join other people's rooms to listen or to talk in. So I'm gonna create my first room here and then I can send this link to other people that I wanna to talk to. Let me make sure my sound is off, it is. Now they're gonna to need to log in with GitHub, but after they do, they can come here and chat. Oh, it looks like I have a Z index error. Pretend you don't see that. All right, so yes, so browsers cannot autoplay audio. So you're gonna to have to push okay when pop-ups like that come up. But now here I am, Ben, talking to my code Pondy buddy. And so listeners can join and we can discuss. Well, they can't discuss, they can listen. But if there are other speakers here, I could talk with them and they can just hear or I can monologue. It's really up to you. Um, but what I can do as a person listening is I can ask to speak. And here I can choose to allow or deny them from speaking. Let's say I'm going to decline because I don't like them. Um, but the thing is, I can turn this setting on and off. So let's say I just want to you know, allow anyone to join to speak, and this is just a fun discussion. You can turn that off like that. But I'm going to keep it on. Uh, but I changed my mind. I'm going to click on their profile and add them as a speaker. So now we can both talk. Um, and this is going to prompt me to allow my microphone. And now we're having a discussion with each other. Let's mute, okay? There we go. And then other people can come to the, oh, well, that, that's awkward. Pretend, pretend you just saw the homepage there. That bug will be fixed by the time you're, you're trying it. So, all right, so it takes you back to the homepage, right? And there's gonna be all these rooms here that you can click on and join and talk. And the basic crux of this that makes it cool, if this guy was here, I could join back. Are you kidding me? I lost the cookie? Okay, Code Pondy is back. So let's pretend Code Pondy really enjoyed the talk that we had. He can go and he can follow me. And then in future discussions that I have, I will show up in the following online list. And he can see all the people that he follows and whatnot, and he can join rooms. And basically the cool part about this is you can kind of be a fly on the wall and listen to really interesting discussions that people are having just live. And sometimes you can even join them, interact, ask questions, and it's just really fun. Doge House is slightly less of a joke than my previous projects, given I actually wanna use it, and it's been a lot of fun to work on. Clubhouse has demonstrated that people want this type of app, and I think there can be multiple players in the space. If I compare this to chat apps, Clubhouse kind of feels like Slack. And with Doge House, I want a different vibe. I want it to be Discord. This is what I envision for the future of Doge House. So first off, I'm definitely just gonna be fixing bugs the first week is what I'm guessing, and just making sure everything is working really smoothly, and also that our infrastructure can actually hold up to the number of users that are using it. And it's possible that my current state management for the client side is janky. And if so, I'm gonna convert the entire thing to X state and make it a huge state machine so everything is super robust. After that, there's just gonna be a ton of stuff missing. And so I wanna fill in all the little gaps that make things awkward when using the website. Like right now you can't change your bio or your profile picture, uh, but that stuff's going to come. I'm gonna smooth all these things out and just basically get feedback from everyone that tries it and fill in all those little things. The next thing is, I don't know where this should be in the priority list, but there's two things that I think are kind of important, but I'm not sure how important. Number one is notifications, specifically push notifications. So when I create a room, I kind of want all my followers to know that, or I want followers to have an option to turn that on. In which case, an app is needed, which means I'm gonna have to make an app. And I'm kind of thinking I might do that with React Native Web. That's a big maybe though, because it may take like more time to learn React Native Web, uh, but that's a possibility. Secondly, global keybinds. So being able to toggle mute, for example, while not having the window focused would be fantastic because I have keybinds now, uh, but you have to have the window focused, which kind of sucks. Uh, but if I want that, I'm pretty sure I need to make a desktop app, which case I'm gonna have to use Electron. That should be actually pretty easy because I'm assuming I can just copy paste the website. Um, but again, I don't know how important that is. I feel like it may be important. Like those are two things I think I want, but I don't know compared to all the other things I could do. Uh, then after that, I wanna have the option to record rooms. So there's gonna be interesting discussions that happen, but the discussions are happening live. So on Twitch, you know, everything is live, but afterwards they have, 
you know, recordings and clips and whatnot that you can do afterwards. So I really want that for this and think kind of like a podcast afterwards. And then lastly, for monetizations, I see monetization, I see like a mix between Discord and Twitch features. So Doge Nitro and Doge Subs. So I actually want people that are creating content on Doge House to be able to make money as well. So like people can subscribe to their favorite podcasters or Dogers, if you will. And also you have the option to, for example, run a Doge ad at the beginning of your podcast or something like that. This is all very much up in the air though. I'm gonna just go with the flow after this launches and see what people think and say and just go from there. I'm assuming paying for all the voice servers for Doge House when more people start using it is gonna get expensive. So I do wanna raise VC money and also use that to hire some people to help me on the project. The tech stack that I used was the Refined Hypebeast stack, which includes React, TypeScript, Elixir, PostgreSQL, Node.js, and RabbitMQ. Yes, I'm back on the Elixir train. I didn't think I was going to do another Elixir project, but this just like it fits so perfectly. I had to do Elixir and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the language at the moment. I'm going to make a separate video soon that's going to go through how the voice servers, the code base, the hosting, all that fun stuff works. But if you want a sneak peek, the code is on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out. And as long as nothing crashes and I'm not just scrambling to put out fires, I'm going to be hanging out in Doge House. So come say hi.